Well, thanks for clicking on this video. Sounds like you and I are both in the same boat. Your pressure washer won't build any pressure. It just kind of trickles out of there, kind of like mine. In this episode of Home Built Workshop, we're gonna tear into this pressure washer, see if we can get it fixed. I kind of have an idea of what I think it is. Stick around, let's see what happens. Welcome everybody, it's pressure washer repair day here. This is my old trusty pressure washer. It's nothing fancy, it's like a 2700 PSI, kind of homeowner grade. You pick them up at the big box stores all over the place. This has been a pretty good pressure washer. I basically got it for free because the original owner was going to discard it because they couldn't get it to run. Well, it turns out the fuel tank and the carburetor, everything was full of water. After cleaning all that out, it fired right up and it's been working great. However, I haven't used this thing in at least six months, probably more like eight or maybe even more. I think maybe from sitting, we've got some issues going on inside this pump. Now I attempted to use this in a previous episode. You may have seen that. If not, there's a link down below in the description and I got no pressure out of it. While I was working on that video, I pulled the pump apart and made sure everything was cleaned out. None of the passages were plugged or anything like that. And I couldn't find anything wrong. So today we're going to pull the pump off there, tear into it a little bit deeper and hopefully get this thing back up and running. So I've got the pressure washer propped up so we can get to the underside. This is the actual pump here that we're gonna remove. There's three Allen screws that we're gonna pull off and that's gonna allow this section to drop off. This is a very common style that I see on a lot of what we'll call, I guess, the homeowner grade pressure washers. We'll remove these now. When loosening these three bolts, I'm being very careful to loosen them slowly and evenly in kind of a circular pattern. I don't want to just remove one completely because there's a slight chance that you could warp the housing. By removing them all evenly at the same time, it helps keep everything nice and flat. And there's our pump. Mine came off pretty easy because I've had this off a couple of times already. Like I said, when I was trying to clean things out, yours might be a little bit stuck. If you need to pry on it or maybe tap it with a hammer, be really careful because this is just, I think a cast aluminum or some sort of an alloy, probably pretty easy to break. So just be a little bit careful if it's really stuck on there. Mine really doesn't come off all that hard, just pops down. So if for some reason you feel like you just need to clean out some of the passages, there's quite a few things you can take off here. Both of these hose connections will unthread here. There's an O-ring connection in there. This is the unloading valve. I have had this apart several times because I thought that this is what was acting up. There's different drain. Huh. Look at that. That just fell out of there. <laughs> anyway. We'll get back to that. As I was saying, there's different valves and connections you can pull off and clean out. This I believe is your temperature pressure relief. If it gets too hot, then this thing will release some of the pressure. What I want to look at, and this piece just falling out of there, kind of confirms my suspicion. In these pumps, they have check valves. There's actually six of them. There's three check valves here, and then behind these, there's three more check valves. I believe on this pump, what's wrong is those check valves, I think, are seized up. And this is actually part of one. Interesting. Where's the rest of it? <laughs> it's like broken in there. I'm going to begin by just popping these little rubber seals out of here. I'm trying to be careful with them. I don't want to damage them as I throw it around. Pop those guys out of there. And now down in these bores are the check valves. Now we should be able to just reach in and pull those out, but I got a feeling it's not going to be that easy. There are no fasteners used to hold these check valves in place. There's only an O-ring that seats down in there. These things are not coming out. I got a spring. Now I think the problem is these check valves are seized up in there. They have a little tiny O-ring that I believe after I let this sit for so long, it kind of dried out and sort of welded itself, glued itself to the inside. So we've got to get those out of there. Now we don't have a choice because it's all broken. <laughs> Hopefully you can see down in there, 
there's a little kind of a white plastic piece and that is the check valve that's what we're trying to get out so far that one's broken and i just broke that one so i'm going to use all kinds of different things i'm going to try these picks and see if i can get in there and get it out of there that way if that doesn't work i got another trick that hopefully will I can't get a hold of these things at all with any sort of a pick or scraper or something. I just can't get it. So I think what we're going to do is break out what we can of this plastic and resort to a different method. And now, <laughs> the secret weapon. This is an easy out or a bolt extractor. It's typically used to remove broken bolts. You drill a hole in the center and then you use these things, usually with a wrench, to back the broken bolt out. These things work great, but I think with it chucked up in a drill, if we run the drill in reverse, it should grab right onto that broken center and allow us to remove it. There is a little, little washer thingy. That's gotta come out of there first. So hopefully you, you can see down in here, there's a little silver shiny bit at the bottom. We gotta get that out first so that it looks like this. That way, the easy out has a place to go. What's holding you in there? It's got a little piece of that plastic in there still holding it in. So we'll just break away a little bit more of it. There we go. That little thing. So now, you can see there's a hole right down the center. Now we can use our easy out. Remember the drill has to run in reverse. And carefully grab the hold and just spin that. I guess it heats up the O-ring and helps it release or something, but pulls it right out. And now we've got our seized up valves removed, we can now install the new pieces. But before I do that, I need to remove these three caps here and do basically the exact same process. There's three more underneath here. The exact same thing goes in all six of those parts. So you need to remove all three of the check valves here, all three of the check valves here under these caps, and then we'll reinstall the new ones. Three more. We gotta do that three more times. The center one here looks like it doesn't quite have the empty space to allow this to go through. So I think I'm gonna grab the next larger size. That way it doesn't stick so far down through. It's just a, got a couple little ports or something down in the bottom there. This one is a little bit trickier. Just because it has those extra ports or whatever on the bottom, I can't get in there very good with a regular easy out. But a drill bit that just barely is too big works. Now you have to be very careful because it is a drill bit. If you were to press down, you'd probably drill out those ports and that's probably probably not a good idea. So you have to be really careful, but a drill bit just catches that metal washer and does pull it right out. With all these old busted things removed, we can put this back together. But before we do, I'm gonna take some compressed air, blow through this just to make sure I don't have any shavings, any pieces of plastic, anything like that in there that could plug everything up and we'll put these in. Let's put this back together. For my repair, I ordered up the new check valves as well as new seals that'll go back in here. I don't know if I really needed these seals, but they weren't very expensive, so I ordered them up anyway. 
to make sure I got the right parts, I was able to look up my model of pressure washer and I found online an exploded parts diagram that has all of the part numbers. That way I could look up that part number, find the corresponding part from whatever retailer you find it from, wherever you find the best price. And that's where I ordered these up. Time to put them in. In an effort to keep the O-rings lubricated, I applied a little bit of silicone grease before installing the new check valves. This also is a good idea because it helps the O-ring slide into place and reduces the risk of it catching and tearing. After I dropped the new check valve down into the bore, I just used a punch to help press it all the way down in. It needs to be fully seated. We'll just repeat this process five more times until we have all six new check valves installed. With the new check valves installed, I'll reinstall those side caps, making sure to add some silicone grease to the O-ring on that as well. Now we can just stick this thing back on the washer, bolt it back in place, and hopefully we'll have pressure. Ooh, those new seals, it fits a lot tighter. All right, we got the new parts installed, the pumps reinstalled back on the pressure washer. I'm gonna drag this thing outside, we'll fire it up. Hopefully we have pressure. Before firing this up, I've connected the water source, turned on the water, and I'm gonna squeeze the handle on the wand to release any air pressure. All right, here we go. That's odd. This thing usually starts on the first or second pull. I guess it helps if there's gas in it. Yeah, that'll do it. And right away, we have pressure. I would call that a success. Well, there we have it. Pressure washer fixed, ready to be put back into service. If you enjoyed this video, I've got a bunch of other videos on the channel you might enjoy as well. Some of them will be linked right here. Thanks a lot for watching. Oh, oh, oh.